Welcome to the Global Peace Film Festival Lives Online Conversation 2021 Festival Edition. Please join me, Kelly Devine, the Artistic Director, and Nina Strike, the Executive Director, in conversation with Ursula McFarland behind the film International Health Service, which is playing as a part of our programming in the 2021 Film Festival. You can find out all the information about screenings, schedules, descriptions, and other upcoming events by visiting peacefilmfest.org. The in-person portion of the festival begins September 21st, running through September 26th. All screenings happening at the Winter Park Library. And then our streaming portion of the film festival begins September 27th, through October 3rd. And now let's welcome Ursula in conversation. Hello, Ursula. Hi, hello there. Hi. Hi, Ursula. It's good to have you joining us. Um, and you're in Croatia, which is kind of exciting. Um, I'm very fortunate I'm on vacation. And uh, yeah, behind me there is um, is a boat. So <laughs> I'm glad you took, um, some, I'm glad yeah, you took I'm the... some time out from your vacation to talk to us today. Oh, I'm really, I mean, honestly, I'm really, I'm, we're just so delighted that our film is being screened as part of your festival. And it's, it means so much to us because it's the reason we make films like this um, is to get it out there to a wide audience and particularly an audience of people who really do care about this and, and hopefully, you know, for whom it's gonna be meaningful. And we're just, we're so delighted. So thank you, really appreciate it. So let's start um, by telling us a little bit about the film. Well, it's a little film, it's a short film. Um, I, I'd like to say that it's a little film with a, a big heart. Um, it's the simplest of films, actually. It's a series of portraits of people who work for the National Health Service in, in England. And um, for people who, who might not know, the National Health Service is a state-owned health service, which is free to everybody. Pretty much all its services are free to anybody and everybody. So if you fall sick in the UK, you will get treated at the National Health by the National Health Service. Um, it's under threat of privatization, like many parts of our national um, services. And um, I want to fight for it amongst, you know, al along with many other people in this country. Um, because I think it's an incredibly precious resource. And anyway, it's, it's a series of portraits of national health workers who are migrants. And migrants make up a huge part of the National Health Service. Without them, we couldn't really, it wouldn't, it wouldn't operate. And it's, um, it's, it's their portraits, it's them literally looking us in the eye to camera, asking us to think a little about them and the lives that they lead and the, the service that they give to us. And we see their names, we see their, um, their you know, their, their job title. And not all of them, but some of them is just a couple of lines that they have said to us about their jobs, their dreams, where they came from, their aspirations, um, their pain, their struggles, all encapsulated in this very short film with just faces and a few bits of text. Well, as you mentioned, Ursula, it um, as a programmer, I was struck with with how much emotion and how much information is packed into this this small but very compelling film. Can you can you speak a little bit about the approach that was taken? Well, I mean, it's it's just that really. I you know, I'm a, I'm a filmmaker. I make lots of different kinds of documentaries, and sometimes you know, we're always pushing the boat out, sort of visually and sometimes you know over complicating things and sometimes I think the best way to project a feeling of something that you want to convey is is to see the human face because the human face everything is there and I think you see amongst these people there's a, a, a wonderful young woman from Eritrea who was forced to leave the country and had to snuck over the border at you know great risk to herself there's a woman from Sierra Leone who had to leave her little boy behind when she came to seek a, you know, a better life. Um, and I think you see everything in those faces. And what we did is we, we went to University College Hospital in London, which is one of the biggest teaching hospitals in London. And, you know, we know roughly when the shifts come out. And this was during the first lockdown. 
um, there was the clap every Thursday night. Uh, so we went on the Thursday just before and just after the clap and we filmed people coming out and we just said, Do you, could you step aside for a few minutes? Tell us a little bit about yourself and we will take your portrait. And uh, that's, you know, a lot of people agreed for us to do that. And so I was thinking to myself, actually, while we're editing it, some of them look so tired. There's just this kind of fatigue on their face and a, which I find in a way is, is a very, I don't know, it's very um, heartbreaking and heartwarming at the same time, because you know that they've, some of them have worked on wards which were dealing with other kinds of patients which had been repurposed for COVID patients. They'd been enlisted into um, areas and disciplines that they were not trained for. So amongst all of that, they've been wearing PPE all day long. It's hot, they're sweaty, they've had to change clothes twice a day and, you know, disinfect themselves down. You know, they're absolutely exhausted and you see that in their faces. And I find that in itself, even without them talking, is to me very moving. So that was, you know, that that was the setting for us. And then um, because, you know, everyone's busy and they all had to go home, we, we, didn't, we decided not to interview them audio in, a, in an audio sense. So then in the, in the two or three weeks after that, I called them all up and they told me their stories. We were on the phone with some of them for hours. You know, I wished I could have um, put all of their stories in there, but we thought it was important that the film was short because sometimes you need brevity in order to make a bigger point. So we tried to just encapsulate some of them with just a few lines about where they came from, but also how this country had treated them. And I didn't say at first that one of my motivations for doing this is I think you know we've lived since the whole Brexit debate we've lived in a very divided country and now we're seeing a very kind of ugly rhetoric which I see you know when migrants cross the channel to get to this country um, there are people who go to the beaches and her you know hurl abuse at them and it's something that upsets me so profoundly. We also have a government who actually said, I want to create a hostile environment for migrants. And that was really where this sprung from. And I wanted to say thank you really to all the migrant health workers who keep the wards flowing. And you know, from there are doctors, there are surgeons, there are cleaners, there are janitors, there are nurses, many, many nurses from all over the world. And they give us so much. And not only that, they do it with such um, grace and kindness and dignity and compassion. And that's what I really felt because all of them, I would say, you know, can you talk to me about whether you've had any hostility since you've been here? Everybody had a story, big or small, but they'd all say, but I am so happy to be here. I'm so happy to have this job. You don't know what it's like in the Philippines where the hospitals are so crowded and no one can afford to pay for their medicine. You know, we're so lucky to be here. So it was a kind of um, sobering and, and, and saddening, but also very, um, you know, very inspiring actually. And, and, and joyful thing to meet them and hear their stories. And I suppose in terms of being in your festival, I think that for me just felt like, you know, that perfect mix because it is hopeful. It is inspirational. Uh, well, we really appreciate that because I, I definitely connected with it. And I also, just in listening to you, you talk, the connection between, um, because the, the, the clap, as you called it, the, you know, the changing of shifts, that was something happening uh, in New York and throughout the United States. Mm -hmm. This, there was this desire, almost in a performative way, um, and I don't say that to, to try and put it down, but but you know there was this desire for everyone, even in the little village where I live. Um, our mayor handed out uh, yards of white ribbon, and we were all asked, since we live in a suburban area, to tie the white ribbon around a, a light post or a small tree, something visible to say that we were thankful for the work of the of, of all those frontline, particularly the frontline health workers. Mm -hmm. But what your film does, which is so important, is, is um, not just to, to give voice to these people, but to connect it to these larger issues that, that run contrary to that appreciation of these workers. And I think that's, a, you, it, it's remarkable how much you are able to 
uh, to show that that kind of contradiction in, you know, and maintain the dignity and grace and hopefulness that you do in the film. Well, thank you. Thank you so much, Nina, because that's definitely something we tried to do. And actually, you know, there were a lot, there were a lot of nurses around that time saying, thank you very much for clapping. We really appreciate it. But actually, <laughs> actually, what we want is to be paid properly, um, to not be completely exhausted all the time, to have our mental health taken seriously. I mean, these are things that are not in the film, but I wanted you to look at those lives and say, yeah, so not just this person is working through COVID and doing, you know, working incredibly hard, but also, you know, they've had some nasty neighbours um, calling them horrible names. And yet still they come to work. So that I think for you as a viewer or a, a consumer of uh, someone who's, um, you know, enjoys the benefits of the National Health Service, it's just kind of peeping behind that curtain, isn't it? And saying, you know, who is this person who greets you? at the reception desk, you know, who is the person who takes your bloods? Who is the person who preps you for surgery? You know, they all have stories. Um, I don't know if you know that website and Instagram, Humans of New York, but that was quite inspiring to me because I just thought, you know, it's just in that one photograph is an entire life. And I think that's what we tried to do is hint at, just, just as of you look at that and just think about who is this person? What did they, do to get here you know how much did they have to sacrifice they had to leave a family behind they had to illegally cross the border where they were you know their lives are in danger um and that to me was the most sort of humbling and inspiring thing about it is knowing what it costs to get them here the fact they go to work every day the fact that despite you know elements of racist people around and undercurrents of racism or you know blatant racism they still come to work every day and and they're there to help us and you know that was you know that really is a nutshell in a nutshell is 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 why we did it and you know and and it's not just me there's there's a whole team and uh, Sunita who runs Gale Force Films um Sasha Neil Raghav you know such a strong little team everybody donated their services for nothing all of the you know the the editing people we managed to get a wonderful track from a incredible composer who sadly died and um we sunita and i rang the his his uh publicist you know his publishers music publishers thinking you know they're going to want to charge so much money for this and when we told them what the film was about they were like no 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 no, no. you know we, we believe in this this is really important so you can have this track so that was really you know again and i you know sort of just an example of it being meaningful to people and and uh, you know touching them in some way. Well, and that meaning for people is is precisely uh, the mission of of Global Peace Film Festival. We we try to curate these stories and these experiences that we hope people will take back into their own lives and into their own communities, so that there are models they can put into place, tools they can use, or ideas that can inspire them to make the world a more just and peaceful place. And it seems as though you have, you, you know, that this film is part of a community effort to do that as well. Yeah, no, absolutely. I, I, you know, it's both a, a, the small little filmmaking community who got together, you know, my, my quite small but wonderful team, um, plus a community, you know, we dipped into a community of a particular hospital, which is part of a I mean, you know, the, the, the NHS is one of Britain's biggest employers, if not the biggest. So, you know, you're, it's just one hospital, it's just one city, but, you know, you're part of a much bigger network. And so hopefully somebody could see that who lives in a, a, a very tiny town in rural Scotland, but they also use the NHS's services. And I just, you know, healthcare is so fundamental to all of us. All of us get sick or have a baby or well, all of us are born, you know, all of us will die. Everybody will use the health service in our own countries, whatever it is. You know, I love our health service. I think it's one of the most precious things we have. And these, these workers are part of that, you know, part of that sort of the diamond of the National Health Service. So I think, I just hope people watching it um, just makes them think the next time they go to the doctor's surgery or wherever they happen to go. And, you know, 
spread a bit of that appreciation to the people around them. So how can uh, the people who watch this film, um, I'll wait for you to come back. <laughs> how can the people who watch this film support, what, uh, support your effort? In terms of this film or, or generally? In terms of this film and then, and then also address um, what's next for you and, um, and how people can support your own work. Well, I think, you know, I think it goes back to that thing of don't just, you know, look for the story behind everybody, each and every person. And I think since I've been making documentaries, um, I made a documentary about abortion ones. And after that, I used to think a lot when I was walking down the street, looking at a young woman who might look sad or stressed, thinking, you know, I wonder what you're going through. Um, I wonder if you've just had an abortion, if you're scared, if you're thinking of it. And I think it's, that's the power of filmmaking. It's empathy. And I suppose really boil down to it, that's what I would hope a film like this does, encourages people to find the empathy that we all have within us, um, that, you know, is crystallized here in something very relatable, which is healthcare. Um, but which also brings in the whole idea of, of migration. You know, people need to move out of war-torn countries or need to move for economic reasons. And they'll come to a big metropolis like New York or London. Uh, and we need them. You know, we need them. Not just the health service, transportation, factories, teaching, everything. You know, we need them as much as they need us. And I think, that rhetoric is not always examined. You know, it's, oh, they need us. They're going to take away our social services and, you know, all that kind of things. No, we need them and here they are. And in this little film, there's some of the most dignified, graceful, lovely, funny, lively, interesting, curious people that you will ever meet. And I hope you just get a little hint of that. Well, that's wonderful, Ursula. And, and yes, I think anyone who watches this film will be rewarded for having done so. And thank you and your whole team for making it. Um, and uh, if you want to learn more about Gale Force Films, please be sure to check out galeforcefilms.co.uk and find out about their future projects and follow Ursula as well uh, on social media. And remember, if you are looking for information about the upcoming Global Peace Film Festival, please go to peacefilmfest.org. You will find out everything about scheduling, descriptions, and upcoming events as they're announced. And you'll also uh, find out about um, the screening dates, uh, which are September 21st through September 26th for the in-person portion and September 27th through October 3rd for the streaming portion. Thank you so much, and we'll see you at the next GLOBE.